Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1970-73 Carrier League Draft Preview. We're doing another card set analysis, continuing into the 1971 box. We got through the American League in the last two videos. I'm going to try and do the entire National League in this one video tonight. And then this box, the only thing left to look at would be the wavered, retired, and guys who have not been in the league before. But we can ana analyze that in the 2560, which we introduced earlier in the uh, playlist. But let's continue with the American National League North. Starting with the Atlanta Braves in the National League North. So, they made a trade to get Maury Wills because they had Sonny Jackson, who they weren't thrilled about. They had a kind of weakness at shortstop. Plenty of pop everywhere in their lineup. And uh, Maury Wills moved through a few teams near the end of his career, and he was on the California Angels last year. The Dodgers before that. History suggests he played a little bit for the 1969 expansion Montreal Expo team. And here he could be picked up as a nice little shortstop. B stealer, switch hitter, hits both ways. Nice little player. He's getting up there in age, but look at that, 640 plate appearances. He did that with back with the Dodgers for, for his second or third stint with them. Alright, the next card is Negro. He'll, he will come back. It's a question of choosing which card. Will it be this one? This is a pretty good one. He raised below three, and he pitches on three days rest. Good candidate. If it's those two, however, it means we can't pick this one which is George Stone, a lefty starter seven. And let's take a look at his numbers. 359 ERA. Basically, you want to make sure you get the, you, you know you're going to have a plenty of shots for Phil Necro, but you want to make sure you get the best shot at George Stone. He pitched for the Braves during this period. The question is, you just want to make sure you've got the right year lined up for him. It's easier to get it for Negro. Florida Marlins struggled last year as all the expansion teams do. Jose Pagan uh, he's got power and on base against righties a little disappointing against lefties really isn't a full-time player but 241 might not be his best year. Uh, if Chico Simone and Pagan platoon with each other you might have something. Simone against lefties, Pagan against righties at one position. Pretty interesting platoon. This is how you can get a value out of a 179 hitter that otherwise you probably couldn't. Alright, Manny Moto. We know he'll come back. And we want him to hit 300. Most of the time, he does. And he hits 312 here, but no home runs. So, And his defense is still good. He's a 3. And they liked Casey Cox, he was a pretty good pitcher for them last year. And this is his 71 card, only a starter five, not crazy about that. Where I'd more be likely to have him in the bullpen. He's pretty good against righties, the 399 ERA. 124 innings, I don't like starter fives, so I prefer starter six and higher. That is your Florida. All right, here's your world champion, New York Mets. Looking to see what they do from 71. I can tell you one guy. I know it's going to be from 71. And he's right on top. Cleon Jones. So, with the five guys they had to protect, they decided they had to choose between Cleon Jones and Tommy Ag. Unfortunately, they picked Jones. And they picked it for this card. His card is pretty close to the card he had in 1969 when he hit 340. Here he's only hitting 319. But when you factor in the walks... That's a pretty darn good card right there. I can go to the All-Star game if it, everything goes right. Plenty of power on base both ways. So this Cleon Jones will get into the league. I can guarantee that. Jerry Grody, a hero of Game 4 of the World Series. This is mostly going to be about arm. Minus 3 or better is what we're looking for during this era. Well, willing to sacrifice the bat. So I'll have to figure out what we computed his arm to be. 270. Much higher than the last two years. So it could be Cleon and Grody. But if you did that, 
Let's say you did Cleon and Grody. You couldn't take this brilliant Tom Seaver card. For some reason, this Tom Seaver card that came with the set was a lot more loved, as you can tell, than the other Met cards, for some reason. Um, a lot more uh, finger marks and so forth. Pencil marks. So anyway, Seaver. Oh my goodness. Buck 76 ERA and almost 300 innings. Whew. Boy, the Mets have some more tough choices to make. And Jerry Kuzman. This is a good card. It's not a great card. It's it's good though. If they had a sh you know uh, good ERA, didn't ha have much success pitching though, win loss and all, so forth. If they uh, didn't already have some great guys, Kuzma's going to have to pick a different year than '71. The Phillies. All right, Jerry Johnson. Pretty good reliever. Doesn't give up the long ball here much. 12-9, 297, 109 innings. Long man. Nice card. Nice long reliever. A little susceptible to walks to lefties, though. Don't, don't like that. Frank Lanning's got a good card in this series. Could be this one. 212 ERA. No home runs. Puts guys on. But no home runs. Singles. Puts a lot of guys to lefties on, but no homers. I like that. And okay against righties. So that two righty relievers to choose from. John Callison has, a, I think, one more good year. Might be 1970. He can still play defense, but his stick is starting to wane a little bit here. And Grant Jackson eventually moves to the bullpen. Here he's an Oriole. The 312 ERA, kind of in that transition period between starter and relief. He's pretty good, actually. So... I frankly like uh, Grant Jackson more than those two righties in the bullpen. That's your National League East. Let's get into the National League North. Starting with the Cubs. Reds, Pirates, and Cards. Your Chicago Cubs. Sano, he's not a one in a, at third anymore. But he's got everything else you want out of a third baseman. Full-time guy, plenty of power and on base. Magnificent year. Well, very good year. 21 bombs out of your third baseman. Definitely keeper eligible. We'll see how that works out. Great year out of Fergie. Starter 9. 277, 24 game winner. Two great cards right there. Del Luncer, still good defense. More, Mostly a one-way player, though. As you see against lefties, it's kind of meh. But against righties is pretty good if you're looking for a one-way player. Full season. Maybe you, if you play them half a season, the batting average will improve. Only three guys for the Cubs to consider. All right. The Big Red Machine. They've been disappointing in the last couple years, unfortunately, for the Reds. It's time to make a move in the postseason. All right, Rose. It's not going to be this card, I can tell you right away, because he's the MVP of 1973. And a 304 average is great, but not great enough for the Hall of Famer. Oh, excuse me, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, that's a great card, but there is going to be a better one. Lee May. Wow. He probably doesn't hit 38 home runs. 39, actually. 278. Actually, yeah, this is better than 70. 70 and 71 Lee May are both magnificent. I'd probably go with this one. If you're not going to go with Rose, then go with May. All right, here's a guy they traded for in the offseason, Dick Bosman. Is it for this card? I don't think it's for this card. This is a good one. But in 70, his ERA is 3 on uh, 200 innings. A little bit better. So they're going to go with 70 Bosman. This is definitely a, a good runner-up. Wayne Granger. Doing Wayne Granger things here. Always known as a ready gets ready's out. Decent reliever. You know, 333. Alright, plenty of options for the Reds as you saw. No problem with them. Pirates. The Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, we know they win the World Series this year in 71. 
And frankly, they had a dismal season last year. So they want to show the world that last year was an aberration. Bob Moose, don't like this one. We know we have better Bob Mooses coming. Yeah, that's okay, but not good enough. Jim Rooker, we traded for Rooker from Kansas City. This is probably a Kansas City card if I had to guess. And it is. You see, he isn't quite ready. Um, he struggles. He becomes good in 1973 for Pittsburgh. Richie Hebner, always want to get some stick out of this guy. It's deceptively good card. That's not a bad card. You see, it's a 2 2 card because they had so many great hitters. It's probably it's 267, 277, something like that. 271. But against lefties, only so so. Now, Al Oliver, he is playing center field, but if we can get Al Oliver to hit, uh, excuse me, to field better in center, that'd be great. Just ordinary, nothing special. We want Al Oliver at 300 and play center field better than that. So that's the Pirates. Nothing really amazing there, but they had a great haul last year. If you recall, they got the 71 Rennie Stennett and the 71 Willie Stargell card in the league. All right, the Cardinals. Going to run and uh, getting up there in age, Julian Javier back. He's still a two at second base, though, and uh, he can hold his weight with a stick. Power, plenty of average against lefties. Ooh, that's kind of weak against righties, but it's good enough to be an everyday second baseman if you bat him eighth or ninth against righties and give him a full-time role. Rick Wise. Actually, the big trade with Carlton. You see a Philly. But, um... It's okay. I mean, it's it's not that bad a card. 17 and 14, the year before he gets traded for uh, Steve Carlton. So, you might as well use it. Because we know it won't be quite as good in 72. Lou Brock. Fine card. Double A stealer. Defen oh, I like the walks. Normally he doesn't draw a lot of walks, but here he does. That's a nice looking card for a leadoff hitter. 313, oh yeah. And 716 plate appearances. Oh, single one to 19 on 10. Yeah, you want this card. Boy, yeah, that'll do some damage to the top of the line up there. Great Lou Brock card. With him in 71 and Joe Torrey in 71, look out for the Cardinals. I know they didn't, they had to, you know, play in the same division with the Pirates. Chuck Taylor, you don't want this one. He's vulnerable against lefties, and he's not dominant against righties. So, now to that. All right, we've been through two boxes. Let me take a quick break, and I'll be right back. All right, we move into the Mountain Division, the division that is always up and down every year. You never know what to expect because it's hard to carry players from year to year when they don't exist, and they're looking to get... Castaways from other organizations, extra player cards that strap parents, players with limited playing time. Colorado won this division two years ago. Las Vegas won it last year. Is it Arizona's time? Let's take a look what we got here. Popovich. Ooh, good glove. As a switch hitter, he brings plenty of power. Look at that, against lefties, which is odd for this player. But I'll play the bulk of the time against righties, and the bat's not very good. So hopefully, probably a 243 hitter. 217 because of the percentages, right? 71%, yeah. Well, the left side makes up for it. I don't know how many good cards this player has anymore, but this would be a, a good one for this player. Um, he's not a star, obviously, but workable. Chuck Dobson. He's got a couple more years... I think in 70, he pitches on three days rest. Nice win-loss. Did it for the A's. A's don't get him. Nice card. All right, here was a guy they traded for, Ken Tatum. I mentioned that he had three straight All-Star appearances for the Angels, and they were able to trade him because the performance starts to fall off a little bit. 417. His area was below two, three years in a row. And uh, not anymore. Daryl Knowles, strong card. He always has strong cards in this era. 357, though it's 
pitches very well, plays very well with this card. Yeah, I like it. That's that's solid right there. Nothing really flashy, unfortunately, out of Arizona. Hopefully, if they want to win this division, they find some stud players in the other years. All right, the Rockies. Disappointing last year, after the year before when they were magnificent. Ron Reed, he's like a lifetime Colorado Rocky. This is the era where he was a starting pitcher and kind of middling. He was actually more successful as a reliever later in his career with the Phillies and the White Sox. Here he pitches on three days rest. That's fine. You know, it, it's Colorado. They don't, you're not expecting them to get Cy Young performances out of their rotation. You know, pitching in the uh, altitude. You get the idea. So, uh, yeah, that's fine for Ron Reed if we pick that one. Rick Monday has better years than this. I know that looks good, but that doesn't look good. And we need him to be an everyday player, and you don't want that vulnerability there. He's got better years than that. All right, Drago. He does very well at the, uh, the beginning of the, uh, the 1970s in the rotation. Later in the decade, he goes uh, into the... The uh, setup guy in the bullpen does very well there as well. That's some great numbers. So Drago outpitches Ron Reed in this comparison. Monday you don't like, which leaves us Costco. We know we want 1973 Costco. He always crushes homers against lefties, but he does it a lot more 1973 against lefties and righties. That's the card we want for Andy Costco, or at least that's why we made the trade with the. Uh, Yankees to acquire him. All right, Vegas, your division winner from last year. Can they do it again? They did it by improving a lot of their players internally. Kubiak was a two last year at short. This year he's a four, and his stick starts to wane. 250. Yeah, good utility player, fourth infielder. But at this point, he wouldn't be a viable starter. Blue Moon Odom, yuck. I know it's 71 A's in the World Series, but not because of him. Losing record on a good Oakland team. Oakland won more games in 71 than they did in 72, 3, or 4, by the way, and they, when they won the three World Series in a row. All right, Ray Culp. He extends his career quite nicely. It was a Red Sox. And the Red Sox didn't need him anymore. They had Louis Tiant, Sonny Siebert, and they said goodbye to Culp. Decent numbers for an expansion team pitcher. That's fine. That's a fine card. That's fine. He's the best of the cards I've seen for Vegas. Okay. And Portland. Team 31 or 32, depending on how you look at it. Wanting to change their name to the Portland Junkos. Yeah, black-eyed little songbird populating the Oregon woods. All right, here are your guys. Jerry Kenny. Now, you don't play center field anymore, which stinks. That's a nice stick, though, for Kenny. Oh, he's not a, a stealer anymore, either. And he doesn't have power. But he does get on base a lot. Good number one or two hitter against righties in a platoon. Rich Reese has another good year in 70. That's not too bad in the platoon. Power. Batting average is, what, 244? Something like that. 219 because of that bad performance against lefties. All right, Belanger is a one at short, and that is plenty of stick. Excellent card. So he had a 287 card in 69. This is 266 and 500 at bats. And Portland's going to renew this guy, and the Orioles are eventually going to acquire him. Finish his career with the Orioles by the mid-70s. But Portland does not want to let this guy get away. They need all the help they can get. They figure one at short can help their beleaguered pitching staff. Nellie Bryles. Is this the year? This is a pretty good year right here. 3 of 436 innings. Now he's got another year. He pitches this well or better and can pitch on three days rest. So as good as this card is, I think there's a better one. And when you factor in Belanger, they got two good guys there. They seem to be set. All right, and we will wrap this up by going out west, National League West.
starting with the Astros. We talked about how they're going to hold on to Joe Morgan as long as they possibly can. So that trade's not happening yet. Uh, they acquired Merritt in the offseason when he was left uh, unclaimed. And this is not a very good card. No. Toy Cannon. He's got a good 70. He still has on base, but not much here either. And Durker. Uh, he's still got it. He'll pitch all the way through the mid-70s. He doesn't do it on three days rest anymore, but he pitches well. That's disappointing, but the ERA is fantastic. And Denny LeMaster. I don't know how much tread this guy's got left. He could make it as a reliever. We like, you know, if you can throw left-handed, we can figure out a way of getting you into the league. A lefty who gets righties out, if the team has another lefty, and you work them in tandem, that, that's how you work it. You don't want him to be the only lefty in your bullpen because the idea is you need to get lefties out first. But a lefty who gets righties out is very valuable. Yeah, that's that's good stats for a player in the carryover league. So, yeah. The question is, which year does Houston pick? Dodgers. Kind of get to the playoffs and they kind of putter out because they need some pop in their lineup. They need some more power. Willie Crawford acquired uh, in a trade and uh, this is an okay card, but the 73 card is much better. 281. But see the power? It's just okay. They get, they gotta, and they really don't start knocking the ball out of the park until the late 70s when they got Lopes and Garvey and Ron Say and Reggie Smith and Dusty Baker. But until then, Crawford's going to have to uh, pick up the slack in a different year. Messersmith's card's finally up. He'll continue with another great card. Outstanding. Another 20-game winner. Great card for Messersmith. He has a bunch of great cards, though. Now, Tommy John. He'll at least have an average card throughout this four-year period when he's not suffering from Tommy John surgery. Um, and this might be the last year uh, he had, I forget which year he gets hurt, but, um, that's average ERA for a Dodger team. You always want Dodger pitchers to have ERAs three and below. They specialize in a great rotation. And Claude Osteen. So is it Osteen or John? Who has the better card between the two lefties? That's toss up. Dodger. They're both Dodgers, right? Oh, John was still a White Sox. That's what it was. But uh, in this comparison, you could say Osteen is marginally better. All right. Some sand time. Let's start with San Diego. Padres. Always a fun team to have some fun with their roster and get some guys. Joe Gibbon. Fine. That's a nice card. Lefty gets lefties out. Not too horrible against righties. It's pretty good, actually. I don't like that triple there, but... 288, 295. Heck of a card. Get him in the league. That's fine. All right. Fun Clay Dalrymple card. That's why they decided to make him a keeper, because they knew this card exists. Look at the wonderful on-base percentage for this guy in probably, what, 50 at-bats? Look at that. Thank you for making this card Stratomatic. Made this made it a lot easier. This is the type of fun card you want to get into the league. Look at that, 16 walks, so you prorate that. This guy would walk 150 times in a full season. And you don't take him out of the lineup against lefties. So you work him into catcher DH, full time, you know. Gives you the power against righties. Boom, all those walks. Wow. Fun card, fun card. If, if, San Diego's not going to win a lot. At least they can have fun, right? Dick Kelly. This card will kill you because of this. <laughs> I've never seen that on a Stratomana card. But 4, 7, and 8 is triple automatic. You just don't want to put that guy in the game because of that. His stats probably aren't that bad either. 345. But for some reason, they always exaggerate triples too. Because um, it's a rare play, I guess. And so, yeah, they take it away there, though, with, a, with an out. Well, there are some interesting, cool-looking cards for the Padres. Doesn't mean that'll help them win a lot of games, but 
they're fun, and that's what we want out of San Diego. Have some fun. All right, the Giants. Losers of the last two LCS. And the guys are getting up there in age. They're getting old. They don't have many cracks left. Fuentes moves to second base by this time. And that's a great second baseman. Good glove, switch hitter, power against lefties. Fine. A, B, B. Top line is fantastic. Very cool player to have. 273 and 648 plate appearances. But again, he's a second baseman. You're not, you know, you can't expect every guy to be a Hall of Famer. And that's a great, that's a fun card for Fuentes. They might put him at second and move Ron Hunt to third. Sam McDowell. All right, so we mentioned that the Giants won the Sam McDowell Gaylord Perry trade last year. Eventually, though, the Cleveland Indians will win that trade. And McDowell, you got to be careful with these homers and walk combination there. A lot of walks. It's starter seven here. Goes in the rotation 339. If this is the card we take, I'd rather have him be a number three starter, not a number two starter. All right, McCovey, we already committed that we're going to take the 70 card, but it's nice to look at the future, what happens after that. And this is still a wonderful card. Look at that. Wonderful amount of power and on base. He's just only ordinary against lefties at this point in his career. And the last card to look at tonight is a giant legend, Juan Marichal. And believe it or not, this is a comeback card, folks. We had that amazing 1969 card. It was the best pitching card in all of Stratomatic for the last uh, four years and we had to retire it in 1970 Marichal slumps with an ERA over four but in 1971 he rebounds with this card it's not as good as 69 nothing can be but look at those numbers folks it's not a 20 game winner and his ERA isn't 220 but still this is a fine card a lot of homers has a little bit of trouble keeping the ball in the yard but this Marichal card will get into the league, which means only one of these other three get go. Won't be McCovey. So you have to choose between Fuentes and McDowell to team up with Marichal from the 1971 pack, which has now been exhausted. Speaking of exhausted, I'm a little bit too exhausted to try the remaining card looks, but they exist right here. The wavered cards, players who have been in the league and were put on waivers, a ton of them. I might get to these in another video. There's plenty of videos to be made in the offseason. A handful of players, these guys, who actually were put on the retired list even though they still played, but they played very below average. That's why they're put on the retired list. And then these are your guys who have not been in the league yet. And they want a shot at this. The hitters and the pitchers. Certainly left-handed pitchers. How many do we have? Only four. Look at that. But I bet you all four, are mo if, unless they're horrible and throw and throw at the bull mascot. If you can keep the ball away from the bull mascot, you'll probably get into the league. I can just, I'll preview these guys. Hinton, it's not pretty. And again, if these guys have better years otherwise, they'll be taken. But as a guy who can throw with his left arm, it's not that hard to get into my league. Even this guy. He was in the league once two years ago. Oh my goodness. The on-base and homer combo. Ken Reynolds. Oh boy. And Laxton. Oh boy. Oh jeez. Well, I don't know about my remark here. It might be harder than I thought to get this lefties into the league. But uh, yeah, there's always a shortage of lefties in this era. And so that's it tonight for the 1971 box. And we're halfway through looking at the boxes for the 70-73 Carryover League. When we get together, we'll start get back to that 1972 box. First edition, uh, very rare set. Very unique set. Thanks for checking out the videos. We'll see you next time.